UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Live on connectonair.com and remote-radio-week.org. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are watching from. I'm Jackie Lee Dubuy. I work for Internews Network as the project lead for Inclusive Media Project. In the Inclusive Media Project, we are empowering journalists in Sub-Saharan Africa on how to report on disability, on disability stories. Currently, we are working in Tanzania, Democratic Republic of Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, and Liberia. Uh, so today, I'm also delighted to participate in the UNESCO Radio Week, and I'll be presenting on a topic that is close to my heart, which is media and disability. So as radio journalists, radio managers, radio editors, it is important for us to have knowledge on disability so that it can, it can help us to have an inclusive radio whereby we have accessible uh, content for personal disability and content that include personal disability. So I'm going to take you through this short presentation and I hope it will be beneficial to all of you. So this is where we are when we come to disability and media representation, whereby we had persons with disability in the media, but when you look at this side, we don't have any stories of disability in the media. And when media reports ignore disability, it contributes to discrimination because we don't see the images or stories of disability, then we discriminate them more. But where we are right now, we have personal disability in the society, and on this other side, we have uh, stories of personal disability, but not reported well. The names we are calling them, they are still stigmatizing. The stories we are doing, they are still pity party stories. So when we have media reports that devalue or misrepresent disability, it contributes to discriminatory processes. Then this is what, where we ought to be as journalists whereby we have people with disability in the media, but with the right knowledge and information, we are representing them in our, in our media houses the right way. And when we do this, we will have media reports that authentically represent disability and eliminate the discriminatory process. So I have a few tips for you to report on disability. The first one is use the person first language. A person is not a condition. So avoid referring to someone with a disability by his or her disability alone. For example, don't say post polio or epileptic. Say someone who has uh, post polio syndrome or someone who has epilepsy. Also don't use disabled as a noun because it Im implies state of uh, separateness. So for disabled as a term that, that we say, we insist on African journalists, but in the West they use the word disabled. For African journalists we insist on that because when you translate the word disabled in our local community, like for Swahili it is kiwete, kiwete means just something broken and something that cannot amount to anything. So that's why we insist on person first language, the person and then the language. And this is what the convention of human or conventions on the rights of person with disability is advocating for. Then uh, another one is support the human rights based approach. So this one, it aims to empower person with disability and to ensure the active participation in social, economic, political and cultural life. When we are doing stories of person with disability, let us not concentrate on their disability. Let us see what contributions can they bring in the society. Like you can see in this story, resilience, the journey of Senator Dr. Gertrude Dinima. When you see this story, you won't even be able to know this is a senator who has a disability. But you see an educationist, you see someone who is learned and is a senator, and then you can delve deeper into the story. So when you do this, you show that person with disability can be doctors, they can be educators, they can be senators, but you are not just really concentrating on their disability. And then also focus on the person, not the impairment. So in describing a person with disability, focus on individual and not their functional and physical limitation. For example, say people with disabilities instead of the disabled, person of short stature instead of the dwarf, 
I know there is editorial pressure maybe to save time and also to save space, but for us to change the narrative in the media on disability, we have to start doing things differently. So let's focus on the person. The disability is not the person, but let's focus on what the person can contribute in the society. Then we need to emphasize on the ability, not the disability, unless it is critical in our story. And then when we are doing that, let's avoid starting the, uh, our program with very unfortunate, pitiful, very sad, melodramatic introduction. And then someone will just know, oh, that is a very sad story that is coming, oh, that is disability. Let's not identify disability with pity, with sadness, with drama. When we... When we do that, we still have that uh, negative, negative uh, perception or impact to our audiences or our listeners, wherever they are. So let's uh, uh, emphasize on ability and not disability, unless it is very important for your story. And then let's show persons with disabilities as active members in the society. So portraying people with disabilities as active members of society are not passive and dependent, helps break the barriers and open opportunities. As a radio journalist, when you go there, interview a person with disability, bring them to the radio to contribute about politics, to contribute about education, to contribute about everything. Because when they talk about every other aspect of our society, then people will be able to uh, accept them more and include them more. Also, allow people with disability to speak for themselves. So experience shows that when the person with disability speaks with confidence and authority about a particular situation, a person with dis without disability is more likely to believe that people with disabilities are knowledgeable. The what have said. Let them uh, bring them to our studio to talk about education matters, but don't just invite a person with disability to talk about their disability or the disability, or only when there's a disability day is when we bring person with disabilities in our studio. That one cannot really help in changing the narrative of disability in the media and in our society. So, and also when you are interviewing a person with disability, talk to that person, look at them, don't look at the interpreter if, it is, if you are talking to a deaf person to wait for the interpreter to interpret for you. Just look at that person and ask question. It is the work for the interpreter to look at you and to to interpret, but when you look at the interpret, it means you don't really acknowledge a person with disability. Then don't overemphasize disability heroes, because when even though the public may admire superheroes, portraying people with disabilities as superstars raises unrealistic expectation that all people with disabilities should achieve that level, which is not even realistic to people without, without disabilities, because we cannot all be achievers or overachievers. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses. So let us not overemphasize disability heroes. Then avoid words with negative connotations. So avoid referring to people with disabilities as victims, afflicted, invalid, wheelchair bound, cripples, crippled. This is negative and demeaning language. Refer to people who are without disabilities as people without disability and not normal. Because when you say normal versus people with disability, it means you think people with disabilities are abnormal. So language is important because language shapes opinions and language shows the way you are respecting someone. And when we use respectful language and language that is positive, it will help in including people with, this, uh, with the disabilities in our society and hence mainstreaming disability. So I had also an example. This is Godalin Kakuya. He was uh, the best KCP student in Kenya in 2017. But you can see how the media reported because they think uh, they use the superhero, uh, the superhero side. So they even gave baptized Godalin a, a name, which is Golden Girl, because she topped the class she became a golden girl. And this is how the local media reported. But it is not only the local media you will see here. This is Reuters, which is an international media. They also called golden girl with albinism shines as Kenya top student. So when a person with disability or a person with albinism tops, it become golden. This year, the top KCP student was also a girl. I'm sure 
she's nowhere in the news. So when we start, um, we, we have only stories of superheroes and pity in the media. We don't really have a positive portrayal of disability in the, me in the media. So finally, you are concerted efforts to use positive and non-judgmental respectful language when referring to people with disabilities in writing and in everyday speaking can go a long way to towards helping to change the negative stereotypes. So there's so much we can learn about disability reporting and uh, disability in our media houses, but uh, this is just an introduction and the tip of the iceberg. But you can go to our website on Internews, uh, Internews Network, just go to Reporting Disability. You will get there a manual which we have produced for journalists on how to report on disability issues. And we have there so many guidelines and materials to help you in your working reporting. Thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope now you have some tips that can help you to include more persons with disabilities in your reporting. Thank you so much. Asante sana. So thank you so much for listening to me and thank you so much for your time. It was really a great pleasure and honor for me to present. I know this is just an introduction, a tip of the iceberg. So if you need more materials on disability reporting, you can check on our website, Internews website. Just go under reporting disability in the media and you'll find there a manual, a guideline on how to report on disability issues. You'll also find there many tips and many webinars that can help you in your journey in mainstreaming disability in the media. Thank you so much and I wish you good luck in your reporting and in your stories and hopefully and this is my wish and prayer to all of you, kindly include personal disabilities in your media. If necessary, employ them, because in disability movement, there is a saying, nothing about us without us. So when we include them, even by employing them in our media houses, it will help in mainstreaming disability and including personal disability more. Thank you so much. It has been a great pleasure to be with you. I uh, hope to see you another day. Asante sana. Bye. UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Insights and suggestions on how to keep your radio business operating through any crisis. 100% online. Four languages. Live on connectonair.com and remote-radio-week.org. UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Live on connectonair.com and remote-radio-week.org. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are watching from. I'm Jackie Lee Dubi. I work for Internews Network as the project lead for Inclusive Media Project. In the Inclusive Media Project, we are empowering journalists in Sub-Saharan Africa on how to report on disability, on disability stories. Currently, we are working in Tanzania, Democratic Republic of Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, and Liberia. Uh, so today, I'm also delighted to participate in the UNESCO Radio Week and I'll be presenting on a topic that is close to my heart, which is media and disability. So as radio journalists, radio managers, radio editors, it is important for us to have knowledge on disability so that it can, it can help us to have an inclusive radio whereby we have accessible uh, content for personal disability and content that include personal disability. So I'm going to take you through this short presentation and I hope it will be beneficial to all of you. I hope you can be able to see my presentation. So uh, for us to report effectively on uh, disability and on persons with disabilities, we need to have basic understanding of disability. So I'll start by taking you through a case study of Maya. Maya is a 34-year-old who lives in rural Kenya. Maya was involved in a tragic road accident. She injured her back. She was taken to the hospital and Maya was diagnosed by a spinal cord injury. So that made Maya to have a, a health condition, which is a physical disability. 
So Maya cannot move her legs. She cannot sit up. She can sit up, but she cannot walk. So she also has now difficult in functioning. So Maya's family takes her home as they cannot afford further rehabilitation or a hospital-based care because her economic situation now is a barrier. So Maya is here, she has a physical disability. Maya has difficulty in functioning. Also now we can see the family has, a, they are not in a position to be able to get Maya some funds. So she has an economic barrier. There is no system in place to ensure her cost would be covered through social welfare or other benefits. So you can also see the policy is an, a barrier. The policy in, in Kenya is a barrier for Maya because now she cannot be covered. So Maya is given a wheelchair, but her home is on a hill with steps leading up to it. So she cannot independently move around by herself. So also another barrier is presenting itself, which is physical environment. So while she's physically able to sit up and can do many things, she often stays at home. So the perception of her community is that she can no longer take part in many community activities. So the attitude in her environment are a barrier to her participation. So another problem is presenting itself, perception and attitude of her community. Maya has a disability which is a combination of these factors. An impairment or an health condition can be more or less disabling depending on context in which occurs. So that's ladies and gentlemen, that's what disability is, and that's how disability present itself in many, to many people who are not in a, in a position to have, to be, who are not economically empowered, who don't have policies in their countries to protect persons with disabilities, uh, the physical, the accessibility, and also the attitudes of our society, our family and colleagues put person with disability in a very awkward situation. So ladies and gentlemen, from Maya's case, you can be able to see a person with disability has so many barriers that present itself to him or her and makes her participation in the community to be a problem. So it is up to us to highlight these barriers, the economic barriers, the lack of policies by our government, the physical barriers, the perception and the attitude we have uh, towards person with disability as we highlight as journalists, as radio journalists. It will help it will help person with disability to be able to be included in the society more because we'll remove the barriers that make their disability to become more disabling. So moving on, I'll take you through some of the categories of disability. We have physical disability. This is uh, the mobility, whereby a person with physical disability, they will need a walking aid or they will need a wheelchair to be able to move from one place to another. We also have the deaf, those who have hearing disability. We have the blind, those who have visual disability. And we also have mental disability. In mental disability, we have two categories, intellectual disability and psychosocial disability. Intellectual disability most of the times is also referred to as learning disability or developmental disability. So for in intellectual disability, one is born with that disability. Uh, and the category, the examples of intellectual disability includes autism, Down syndrome, Asperger syndrome, all those uh, diseases that a child or someone is born with, that is intellectual disability. It is a love, lifelong disability, but given uh, a lot of support by the community or even the government having right policies, people with intellectual disability live fulfilling life. We also have psychosocial disability, and psychosocial disability, you can acquire it at any stage of life. So the psychosocial disability include the mental illness, it also include the depression, stress disorder, bipolar, and other diseases that you acquire due maybe to pressures, in, to pressure in your life. 
So also we look at the models of disability and when we talk about models of disability, we are talking about how the society perceives persons with disability. So uh, some of the perceptions that are there, we look at the traditional models. This is where we uh, the society perceives person with disability as outcast or people who are cast or people who don't belong in the society or maybe you did something bad to your forefathers or to God and that's why you are punished to have disability or you conceive a child with disability. So that, that is traditional model. We also have charity model. In charity model, this is where we view person with disability as an object of pity. We view the uh, person with disability as people who cannot be able to do anything, but people who need some charity or some money from us so that they can be able to continue with their life. That's why you see most people visit person with disability to give them some money, but they don't think the person with disability needs to be empowered to look for their own source of income. We also have medical model. This is fixing the individual, fixing a person with disability, where we believe that all disabilities can be treated or we don't need to have a disability because we can go to the hospital and get medication because we don't believe that uh, someone can live a healthy, fulfilling life with, uh, with the, the disabilities they have. We also have super creep. This is inspirational. This is where when a person with disability does something, like maybe they are top in their class, then we think, ah, this is this person has really done a very big thing. Then we do a lot of stories, inspirational stories about disability. So the four models are the, the ones we are calling the backward model, which we want people to move away from and embrace the this, uh, the last two models, which is the society model and rights and political model. So for the society model, this is where we are saying the attention should not be on person with disability, but us as the society or the community. We need to change our perceptions and our attitudes towards person with disability. We need to be more including and even have them participate in the, our day in day to day activities. We also have the, the rights and political. This is a twin, a two, a twin track approach whereby we are saying inclusion and participation. In inclusion, we are saying persons with disability need to be included in our society and not only to be included, they need to participate. So for this, I'll use an example of inclusive education where we say children with disabilities should be included in the same classroom with a child without disability. So when they are in the same class, let the teacher be able to know how to, to handle children with disabilities, the intellectual disabilities, how to handle uh, a child who is deaf in sign language, how to use braille. So we are saying our schools need to be inclusive for, pers uh, for children with disabilities. And also, apart from that, they should be accessible. If a child has a wheelchair, they can be able to move freely in, in, in the classroom and in school. So when we do this, we are including a child and we are helping them to participate. Because you can bring a child with disability to the class, but if the classroom is not uh, inclusive, then they will not be able to participate. But if it is a classroom where a teacher has special needs education, the classroom has physical accessibility, then the child will be able to participate in the, in the school uh, comfortably. So thank you so much for listening to me, and thank you so much for your time. It was really a great pleasure and honor for me to present. I know this is just an introduction, a uh, tip of the iceberg. So if you need more materials on disability reporting, you can check on our website, Internews website. Just go under reporting disability in the media and you'll find there a manual, a guideline on how to report on disability issues. You'll also find there many tips and many webinars that can help you in your journey in mainstreaming disability in the media. Thank you so much and I wish you good luck in your reporting and in your stories and hopefully, and this is my wish and prayer to all of you, kindly include personal disabilities in your media.
if necessary, employ them because in disability movement, there is a saying nothing about us without us. So when we include them, even by employing them in our media houses, it will help in mainstreaming disability and including personal disability more. Thank you so much. It has been a great pleasure to be with you. I uh, hope to see you another day. Asante sana. Bye. UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Insights and suggestions on how to keep your radio business operating through any crisis. 100% online. Four languages. Live on connectonair.com and remote-radio-week.org. UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Live on connectonair.com and remote-radio-week.org. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are watching from. I'm Jackie Lee Dubuy. I work for Internews Network as the project lead for Inclusive Media Project. In the Inclusive Media Project, we are empowering journalists in Sub-Saharan Africa on how to report on disability, on disability stories. Currently, we are working in Tanzania, Democratic Republic of Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, and Liberia. Uh, so today, I'm also delighted to participate in the UNESCO Radio Week, and I'll be presenting on a topic that is close to my heart, which is media and disability. So as radio journalists, radio managers, radio editors, it is important for us to have knowledge on disability so that it can, it can help us to have an inclusive radio whereby we have accessible uh, content for personal disability and content that include personal disability. So I'm going to take you through this short presentation and I hope it will be beneficial to all of you. People with disabilities are the largest minority and the most marginalized. We have uh, over 1 billion people with disabilities worldwide, almost 11% according to the World Health Organization, and this is the largest global minority. And it is estimated 60 to 80 million persons with disability live in Africa. And also disability and poverty, uh, most of the time I like referring to them as a brother or sister or twins, because disability can cause poverty, and poverty can cause disability. So for example, picture a parent who has maybe two children with severe disability. That parent cannot leave their children at home and go to work. And even if they leave their children at home, they won't get maybe a good caregiver. So a parent is forced to leave uh, his or her job so that they can be able to take care of the children. And also maybe when you acquire disability at uh, maybe at an advanced age and you are working and maybe you get a disability that you won't be able to function, you may be rendered redundant in your job place. So that's you lose an income and you become poor. So at the same time, uh, poverty can lead to disability. So if you are born from a poor family, some disabilities, you know, they can be preventable, like blindness, some of the childhood disability. But if a parent or the caregiver does not have money to take the child to the hospital, then the, it leads to some of the disability. That's why you say disability and poverty go hand in hand. So person disabilities are, are the largest minority and they are very marginalized in our society. So when we go to media, we see that uh, we only have like uh, people with disability are represented in the media, maybe 12.5%. And also when we don't have uh, images or stories of persons with disability in the media, but when they do appear in the media, the portrayals are not favorable. The names we call persons with disabilities are not uh, favorable. The stories we do, they are just stories of depression. So that's why we say we really need to have this uh, empowerment and uh, knowledge development on journalists on how to report on disability stories. So some of the cuttings I have on how stories are reported in print media, 
around here is there are still stories of disadvantaged and marginalized but in this clip i just want to point on the language of disability reporting we say persons with disabilities are not persons living with disability this is because they live with their parents their boyfriends their girlfriends their lovers their children but they don't live with disability so in, in also in the line of person first reporting so we start with their person and then the disability so it's persons with disability and not persons living with disability then also i had this cutting from tanzania where you see children with albinism they are still being stigmatized they are person with albinism they are still being hunted down like animals because people want to cut their private parts and even their limbs so that they can go and perform witchcraft on it but the media we have an opportunity to highlight such backward uh, uh, such backward actions that are being done to persons with albinism and to call them also that we be able to don't have such stories in 21st century so and also the way we call persons with albinism like in this headline you see albino boy hand hacked off the witchcraft so he's supposed to be a child with albinism so it's a person with albinism but not albino because some of these languages when you translate them in our mother tongue or in our local language like even the most spoken language in east africa so Albino in Swahili is zero zero. So when you say zero 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 zero, it direct it loosely translate to an evil spirit. So already you are calling this person an evil spirit. So even those uh, people, the magician or the witchcraft, they just hunt down the person with albinism because they think they are evil spirit. So you see naming on and how we we call persons with disability by names also contributes to these evil acts that are being done against them. So also some of the stories we see in the media, this is one of the senators in Kenya, uh, Honorable Isaac Maura. Most of the time the media portrays him uh, as a very bitter person. And maybe when they are not talking about the bitterness is maybe Honorable Maura has gotten married or Honorable Maura wife is pregnant. So it leaves us begging like, if a person with disability is not supposed to have a family, a person with disability is not supposed to, to get married or something. So these are some of the inspirational stories we say that they are not good and they don't even advance the agenda of person with disabilities. So the gaps that exist is uh, most organizations for person with disabilities lack skills to engage effectively with the media. Also, the me they lack engagement funds in their budget so they don't have budgets whereby they can engage media and most of the budget they get is just to uh, to implement the projects they have also from the media perspective us as journalists we lack training on disability reporting so using my example i started the first disability show in my country kenya but i didn't have any knowledge on disability i've done a diploma a degree a master's currently i'm pursuing a phd in mass communication but there's nowhere where i got to learn on disability reporting so lack of training in our colleges contributes to what we go to report in the media so for me it was my own journey of discovery looking for scholarship going abroad to learn on disability reporting so that i can be able to get empowered and that's why it is for me it is like i'm so passionate in talking about media and disability because i i need to spread this gospel and for so many journalists to get empowered and also to get the knowledge because what we just report is according to our own perceptions according to the traditional the charity model what we just know about disability but not the right way we are supposed to report on disability also failure to identify with the person with disabilities because uh, when you don't have a disability you don't really care about someone with disability because maybe even there's no person with disability in your family so you don't even think they exist yet yet we do not know that disability is the only club you can join at any point in our lives you can get an accident anytime 
if you uh, grow to an old age, you might end up in a wheelchair or deaf or blind. So disability is a club that you can join anytime. So, be but because we don't think about that, we don't really include disability in our stories. Then also advertisement and competition for media houses for favor more entertaining stories and lack of capacity and facilitation by journalists to cover stories of persons with disability in far flung areas. Because many media houses will say, now these stories are boring, we want to get uh, value for our money, so they won't invest in disability reporting. But we need to know that disability rights are human rights, and we really need to invest in uh, telling stories of persons with disabilities so that we can change the narrative of disability in the media and hence the society. Because we all know that the media is the mirror of the society. So, and like the radio, the radio is most listened to medium and it is very accessible, portable. You can get it everywhere. So as radio journalists, if we can be able to tell more stories on disability, then we can slowly by slowly start changing the narrative of disability in the media. Thank you so much for listening to me and thank you so much for your time. It was really a great pleasure and honor for me to present. I know this is just an introduction, a uh, tip of the iceberg. So if you need more materials on disability reporting, you can check on our website, Internews website. Just go under reporting disability in the media and you'll find there a manual, a guideline on how to report on disability issues. You'll also find there many tips and many webinars that can help you in your journey in mainstreaming disability in the media. Thank you so much and I wish you good luck in your reporting and in your stories and hopefully, and this is my wish and prayer to all of you, kindly include personal disabilities in your media. If necessary, employ them because in disability movement, there is a saying nothing about us without us. So when we include them, even by employing them in our media houses, it will help in mainstreaming disability and including personal disability more. Thank you so much. It has been a great pleasure to be with you. I uh, hope to see you another day. Asante sana. Bye. UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Insights and suggestions on how to keep your radio business operating through any crisis. 100% online. Four languages. Live on connectonair.com and remote-radio-week.org.